Hey, everybody, welcome to the Mobilized Church Podcast, where we talk about what it means to live on mission every single day, where you live, where you work, where you play, and we talk about all the concepts and principles of what it means to truly be an apostolic multiplication church and a believer, and uh, certainly, uh, certainly uh, enjoy the opportunity to be with you every single week. I am Chris Dillingham alongside my big brother, Ken Dillingham. Good morning, Ken. What's happening with you today? Hey, I've got, um, um, I don't have a vote sticker. Hold on. I don't have my vote sticker. They didn't have vote stickers, but they had this. Let's see if I can find this little. Does it count if you don't have the sticker? I don't. I don't no. know that it counts, bro. Sorry. Oh, did I, it? Oh, it really doesn't count because I don't have my little. They gave me a little vote <laughs> stylus. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, okay. I must have to put it in my coat. I better put it in my coat jacket. But uh-huh. uh, yeah, it's a little vote stylus. It said I voted, and it's a little stylus. It had a little, like a. It looked like a little bit miniature microphone windscreen on the top. Nice. And they said, sign your name. And I signed and I signed and I signed. And she said, don't worry about it. Just use your finger. <laughs> That's so, awesome. I hope That's that awesome. the election machines work better than the election. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> election meddling already. So uh, it's a, in case people haven't noticed, we are, for those that are watching on Facebook Live, obviously, you know this, but uh uh, for those that are listening to the podcast, we're recording this on Tuesday morning and uh, November 3rd. And the big thing today is this is my baby girl, my daughter's sweet 16 birthday. So happy today, birthday. Today, yes, that's today right. It is. Happy birthday to Ashlyn. Yep. And, uh, but there's also a little something going on, I guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if people have heard about it, but there's this little thing called an election that's happening. Yes. And, I, have, uh, hey, I have a prophetic announcement. Oh boy, here we go. Just started out hot, man. I have a I believe that they there will most likely be a president determined by inauguration 2021. <laughs> that's I, actually, unfortunately, that's a pretty bold statement. I don't know that we certainly know that for a fact. I mean, yeah. you know, so. well, I said it's prophetic. <laughs> we'll find out if it's prophetic or pathetic. I know if you're a false prophet, huh? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm only, I'm only, uh, I'm only speaking in jest. I love it. I love it. Well, we want to, we want to talk today, Ken. You know, one of the things that that uh, that we really have uh, tried to make as a major part of this podcast, and and uh, let me just say this first of all, before we get into that, man, we've gotten some unbelievable responses uh, for from some people that have have listened. Uh, pastors passing it on to their leaders, asking them to listen to these these um, uh, recordings, these podcasts, and uh, you know people listen to them multiple time times, and so we certainly appreciate all of the positive feedback that we've gotten on that. Thank you, thank you for being a part. Thank you for listening. But one of the things we've really tried to do is we want to make it pr- uh, practical. Obviously, we want to be very practical. Right. And uh, we don't want to get wonky on everybody and just talk talk a bunch of theory and you know concepts that don't have any practical application. But but we also want it to be very relevant. And we are living in, man, just you know we we we've kind of gone over this a little bit. But living in uncertain times, turbulent yeah. times, a lot of craziness, a lot of information, misinformation, people feeling like they're you know, their, their vote or their voice is being suppressed. I mean, just a lot of stuff going on. So Ken, we want to talk today and I'm just going to throw this out to you in the form of the question. So the title for this episode is real world discipleship. Right. And so I want to, I I want to just have you start today by let's, let's start the conversation of talking about, you know, knowing what today means, knowing that people are, man, highly emotional, you know, they're really bought into a candidate. They're really bought into, you know, whatever, whatever the issue might be. And, you know, people on edge wondering what's going to happen. So what, what should the mindset be of a disciple of Jesus in, in a, in a moment, in a season like this, what should the mindset of a, a disciple of Jesus be? And, and, and not only just a disciple of Jesus, but somebody who is a disciple maker, what should our mindset be in things like this, where it's very heightened emotions and people are really fired up on both sides? Yeah, I, that's a great question. And I think, I think one of the things that's important for us to really uh, take a look at is, 
um, you know, I've heard it said before that, that life will, life will give you enough bumps in the road for whatever is within you yeah, to spill out over the edge of the cup. And, um, <clears throat> I do believe that it is in high stress times. I believe that it's in times of, uh, very much emotional, emotionally charged times, times where we're, we're, we're feeling like maybe we're not so much in control or whatever that our, our real kingdom worldview is identified. Yes. You know, we, you can Man, tell right. what a person really feels and what they believe and how they, you know, what, 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 when it's crunch time, you can really know what a person's real heart beat is and what their, what their worldview and the lens that they look through. That's yes. from a perspective of a believer. I think from a mission maker or, or a disciple maker, I think it's important for us to, to, to stop and say, you know what, when the world is in that condition and they don't know Jesus, yeah. This is where we're called to shine. This, these yes. are the moments. So, so I, Absolutely. I, think, I think the thing that's get, that, that, that is most vital for us right now is to say, look, if anybody, if anybody, we go ahead and be passionate, go ahead and be passionate right. about who becomes president, be passionate about who is your elected official and all of those things and levies and things that are happening in your area, because it does affect the world you live in and it affects the world that the world that your children and your grandchildren are going to live in. Sure. It is important. It does matter. It matters it matter. about how the, the kind of life we're going to live. And the Bible said, you know, the, the, we know that the new Testament church was lived in a very volatile time and in a hostile time. And there's even scripture that talks about the, to pray that we would be able to live a, a quiet and peaceable life. Yeah. And so praying for those that have the rule over you and praying, uh, you know, follow peace, uh, you, you know, we're to call it follow peace, have peace with God and have, have peace with men. Sure. Uh, you know, and so I, I do believe that it, it does, these things do affect the life and the world we live in. So obviously it, it is something that uh, is it, that it affects us, but it doesn't affect the outcome of God's plan. Yes. None of these things affect the outcome of God's plan. If, if we can differentiate those two things and then say, look, I'm not saying that it doesn't matter. I'm not saying that it's not important. What I am saying is I have this confidence. Yes. And, and it's built on the fact that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And I believe that that light needs to shine. And as missional people, I believe that this is an opportunity for us to say, you know what, while the world, the, the world may be mixed up and messed up because this is all the hope they've got. Sure. That this sure. is game day for us. There's coming a day where none of these people and none of these players are even going to they're not even going to be a, a drop in the bucket right. of God's plan and glory when he, when he sets up his kingdom or Man. when he sets up his throne. Uh, and that's so, that is so awesome. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you made the comment, made the statement about, you know, go ahead and be passionate about these things. You know, I think sometimes there's the, there's a um, Eldridge, John Eldridge wrote the book wild at heart talking about men. And one of the things that, you know, Christianity, modern Christianity has, has unfortunately in a lot of ways become a religion of women. And some of that is, is that men have viewed it like, you know, it's, it's a passive, it's a very passive, I sort of say sissy religion, but it's kind of a passive religion right yeah. just throw it out there but it's, it's great become, great catch and change of words there i know right and then it just came out anyway so it's a, whatever but yeah. but it's been it's viewed by a lot of men as a really passive religion that you can't have any opinions you can't have any thoughts you just got whatever and and the reality is there are some things that we need to be very passionate about i made right. i made a you know we're talking about heaven doing our series about heaven and and understanding that when when we get to the final place new heaven new earth that we don't lose our identity, every tongue, every kid and every tribe, we're going to be there. We're, we're not going to be just nameless, faceless blobs. We're, we were so saying good. identity. And what that did for me was it once again, highlighted for me, the value of every single life. And I'm radically pro-life. I watched a video this morning about, um, and I, again, we, you know, we'll just, we'll just, I'm not trying to be controversial, but we'll just go right at it uh, about Planned Parenthood 
And, you know, we can talk about the things that they do provide for women's health, but the reality is there is, there is clear evidence that there is, that that is a, an organization that harvests organs of a di- and parts of a di- of, of aborted babies. True. And I'm radically pro-life, not as a political statement, but as a belief system statement, a value of the kingdom. He is the giver and the creator of life. And so, you know, you can be, you can be very passionate and it's okay to be passionate and it's okay to be vocal about those things. I think our world needs to hear that, you know, that, that, that we are passionate about these things. I think so, so good. The balance is the balance is exactly what you said. We don't we don't believe that the systems of this world, the kingdoms of this world, are the end all be all. Ultimately, it's His kingdom, it's His system, and so we've got to be careful not to become, to use your your concept, the is ought. We don't become just ought defenders standing over here screaming at everybody if this is the way it ought to be. No, our responsibility is to declare not that we're just pro life, but that we're pro life because because your life matters because you're you have value in the kingdom of God that's why I'm pro life is right. because that little child has been has been created in the mother, in in your mother's womb I knew you he he created us and so you know be passionate about those things but but people that hold opinions and thoughts that are contrary to the value system of the kingdom they're not enemies they're not yeah. enemies with us they're yeah. just they're just they have a value system that is against or opposite of the value system of the kingdom. And so our job is God doesn't need us standing up over here screaming and pounding our fists at everybody angrily saying that this is the ought. He needs us declaring the truth and and speaking the truth, gospel fluency, speaking the truth into everyday life. This doesn't mean that you avoid conflict, that you avoid confrontation, that you avoid having an opinion. You just become real nebulous and just, you know, no, don't, don't be divisive in any way. Jesus ma- made statements and said a lot of things that were very divisive, but it wasn't done in an, in a way to create divisiveness. And one of the things I'm concerned about, Ken, particularly in a social media age, and you know, it's ironic that we're doing this on social media as well, but in a social media age that people feel somehow vindicated because they go out on social media and, you know, make a declarative statement versus learning how to speak those values into people's lives that are discipleable, that are open to the kingdom of God. And I think, I think, so a discipleship discussion this day is have, have strong beliefs, have strong opinions that are Bible-based, that are rooted in his value system, that have the big picture of the kingdom over, you know, what we desire, what we want in this world, but also understand we do we do have a responsibility not just to speak to nameless, faceless masses, but to speak the value system of the kingdom into real life people every single day. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and the and I think what happens a lot of times is is that the only the only way that things like positions that you just mentioned, like abortion, the yeah. only the only way that that becomes a problem is if we have a if we have an earth up perspective even right. about our Christianity. Right. We have an earth up perspective. Then we think that what, what, what happens here is what's in control. Right. If we have a top down or a heaven down perspective, a kingdom, a true kingdom perspective, which is, you know, our father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. One of the th- things that I think creates the problem is, is when we believe that w- when, when the, the, the real differences, the declarations are uh, seen as uh, social issues mm-hmm. or, 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 or political party platform issues. And, um, and, and so it becomes a little convoluted at that time because then, then, then it's like, you know, well, all you Republicans, blah, 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 or all you Democrats, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. And really, we're not defined by any of those things. And I think this is a moment where we, man, you know, that's, that's very good. Yeah. What we need to, I think what we need to do is to, to go back to this idea that, you know, the indicative creates the imperative. Um, you know, the, what, the thing that God has said, the, the thing that God has declared over us, uh, you know, as, as his children, the thing that God's declared over the world right. creates the imperative, meaning, in other words, the thing that must be done. Yes. Oftentimes, and I think oftentimes in Christianity, some of the things that you hear, you hear people say, you know, 
you, you know, Christians, uh, you, you know, Christians are supposed to be loving. You're not loving enough. You need to go be more loving. And what happens is, is then it puts it on that person to go out and figure out how to be more loving. But we understand that lo- God is love. Right. And so when you look at the, the, the uh, indicative creates the imperative. There are four key questions that you ask. Who is God? What has he done? Who am I because of what he's done? How then shall I live? And if, if, if everything is being defined from God down or for, from his kingdom down, then how we live is an expression of who God is. Right. That is the ultimate form of worship. The right. ultimate form of worship is when our life reflects the, his, his glory, his worth, his value. Yes. So, it, you know, I think that sometimes in, in this real world that we are talking about, if we can look at things and say, look, if I'm, if I'm living heaven down, then I understand that God, you know, God is, who is God? God is a missional God. What has right. he done? In his mission, he incarnated himself and came to seek and save that which was lost. Who am I because of what he's done? I am that lost person that has found his way in Christ. How sure. then shall I live? I, as one who points others to the way. Right. And right. if we can, I think, I think if we can really grasp that, wrap our minds and hearts around that idea, I think it really changes the, 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 the true uh, fuel for the mission and, yeah. and, and, and the so way true. we process all this stuff. And don't you think it brings a peace? I mean, I think that's one of the things that we really have to come to terms with is that, that when you have that, that heaven down view, that heaven down perspective, it puts you at peace because then you understand no matter what happens, God, his plan is in control. He, right. he, his perfect plan is in control. Obviously, as a, as a person, as a human, I have, you know, an emotional investment there. You know, I, I just have some beliefs, some inclinations, whatever, um, about how I think our world should be run. And I'm sure. concerned about some of the things. Do I want to see our nation, you know, move into more of a socialistic view? No, not, not because, not because I'm this massive capitalist, I believe in this, but because I know what socialism brings. And right. it's always accompanied by a lack of God centeredness. You know, the, you know, a nation where our, our founding is built on a moral code that comes from Judeo Christian values. It just does. And you move to a socialistic view and all of a sudden, you know, the, 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 the nation that we knew now is no longer because it's not rooted and grounded in Judeo Christian values. I think we've got to come to terms with the reality, Ken, is we are living in a post Christian nation anyway wow. right i yeah. mean you, you you listen to this the sociologists that study this and i'll tell you we, we it, this is not you know the america that we kind of sometimes romanticize or whatever yeah. Yeah. and and so so sure I, I can get all worked up about that and and you can take from that whatever you want to take about who i'm voting for or whatever but we can get all worked up about that but the, where I get the peace, where I, where I don't feel the need to go out and lambast everybody who maybe is on the o- opposing side or opposite view. And this is so critical, I think, in a cancel culture um, because, because, you know, that, that cult, the culture is saying if you have an opposing view, no longer – now we can't even be friends. You know, sure. our, our dad lost a friend that grew up together 70 years. They've been friends, grew up on the same street, Mount Vernon, Illinois, and lost him over political views. The cancel culture is so strong. What we have to understand is this, is I may have those inclinations, but I trust and believe that God's plan is going to come to pass. And there are some things that have to happen in the last days for his plan to come to pass. And if this is a part of it, and this is what God wants, then I'm going to trust that his purpose and that his plan is absolutely going to come to pass. And I believe that the value or that the kingdom is going to move forward regardless of, you know, what happens politically in our nation. And I think that brings a peace. And when you have that peace, now all of a sudden I don't view people as enemies. And I think this is really critical is we need to be able to talk to people on these issues that are on the polar opposite end of an issue or whatever, and to be able to have the conversation without feeling this pressure of the cancel culture that, you know, we got to, we got to shut them down. We got to, we got to, all it is, is evidence. It's just evidence that they don't have a God view and a God perspective. So true. I mean, 
it's and 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 that's the thing where you know you, you, forgiveness doesn't generate from a human from a human um humanistic philosophical or a human place i mean you know the bible said for by grace for you saved and that not of yourselves didn't it right. didn't generate from within us so the, the whole idea of forgiveness um Adam and Eve didn't even understand in the garden of Eden. Right. They hid themselves. They showed sure. fig leaves. They didn't, they didn't seek forgiveness. They didn't ask for it. They didn't forgive each other. They blamed each other and they hid themselves from God and they tried to cover their sin. Right. Well, there's their society. Right. In right. a nutshell. Right. Sure. They, they, they blamed each other. They hid themselves from God. Right. And they tried to cover their sin. Right. Right. I mean, absolutely. Right? And the implications so, of that, the implications of that are what we're seeing today. Exactly. Life doesn't have any value. There you go. I can be whatever I want. There's no true definitions of things. We can make it whatever we want it to be. Right. So that's, that's the sure. living example of what happens of that kind of mindset, that kind right. of attitude. Cain slew Abel and God said, where's your brother? And he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? Right. You know? Yeah. And I mean, God, you know, we, we joke and we say, moms can say, you know, I brought you into this world and I can take you out of this world, but God really could have said that to him, <laughs> you know, don't get smart with me, boy. Yeah. But, but the, but the thing about it is though, is that, you know, here's Abel and he doesn't really have a whole lot of conscience about what he did or excuse me, Cain, yeah. uh, and, you know, and I think we said it a couple, maybe a couple of uh, podcasts before that, you know, Cain was willing to do it as Cain was willing to do to his brother out of jealousy what he wasn't willing to do to a lamb out of obedience to god and my we, god you know my and, god mic <laughs> drop right there bro <laughs> you know and we live Think in a about world about that yeah yeah i mean and it's and it is sad and and so forgiveness doesn't uh, forgiveness uh all of the things that we enjoy this is why we this is how we should be able to posture the better way of god's kingdom god's way is better it's a better way it's a better why, way why is it a better way? Because humans don't naturally don't don't naturally improve. Yeah, man, that's so true. I said that on Sunday to our church in a, in our prayer meeting. You know, imagine how much better our world would be if we did life God's ways. Mm -hmm. There would there would be no racism. There, right. there would be no racial injustice. Right. There, there there wouldn't be violence against each other. We would we would value and respect. I mean, the Ten Commandments. We'd value and respect each other's properties. Yeah, I mean, all of those things. The things that people are clamoring for and really wanting is expressed in the value system of the kingdom. It's 100%. there, right? 100%. But but be but because again, like you said, you know, people have missed and because they've they've made their bellies their their god. They've made themselves their own god. And so they reject, vehemently reject, you know, the, the, the gospel message, the gospel of the kingdom, they vehemently reject it. And sometimes, sometimes, you know, people reject it because they love the darkness. They love the things that they're doing. You know, we love John three sixteen, but you've got to read the rest of it. Jesus said, they're yeah. going to, they're, they're going to, already. they're condemned and they're going to reject the light because they, those that reject the light love their darkness more than they love the light. And so we have to understand that's part of the world that we're living in. And that, I mean, think about this, Ken, God, I was, I was thinking as you were talking there and I want you to address this. Number one, do you think we're living in the last days? And if so, what are the implications of, of living in the, the last days? And so we see this, this, there is, man, there is a heightened tension and, you know, they're talking, they're talking about if the election doesn't go a certain way. Um, I read a, a deal this morning that, that there are like, I don't know, 70 cities that are pre prepping and preparing for, you know, chaos. Right. Um, and so there's this now no longer is it again, just, just conflict, but man, it is attack. It's aggressive. It's in your face. And think about this. God called us for the kingdom for this time. Mm -hmm. So here's what I know. I know that God anoints his people to be able to, to withstand the season and the time that he's called us to as a right. dad, I worry about my kids. I worry about the future of the things that are going to, but my, my statement to them is so always good. 
every season God equips with an anointing that is particular and special for that moment, for that moment of time, that season. There's nothing to be afraid of. So I want you to, to maybe address that question. You know, what do you, do you, do you think we're living in the last times? Why? And what does that mean? Well, yeah, I do. I think, um, I think in a, in a very, in a, in a very, um, general sense, you know, the, the, the apostle Paul said, was it Paul that said now is your salvation nearer than when you believed high time to um, wake out of your sleep. Right. Yeah. It's, and so, so I think from the, the, uh, from the perspective of the fact that, you know, if the first church was looking for the return of the Lord, we really better be right. Um, and right. I think, I think, and then specifically f- from a general, from a general perspective, I, I think it's, you know, that may be all that we need right there. Uh, it is going to happen and it's going to happen, um, you know, in some generation and it very well could be this generation. And so, and so you better be ready. And right. so, so I think from that, from that angle, you know, absolutely. But from the perspective that says, you know, that in the last days, you know, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse. Yeah. Uh, perilous so, times. Will perilous times. Scoffers, um, you know, loving pleasure more than loving God um, without natural affection. Yeah. Um, you know, I saw you, you started with abortion and I saw somebody that said, you, you know, said uh, that some, somebody had t- texted or twi- tweeted uh, or retweeted something where there was a, a some polit- or not some some public figure said, you know, I feel sorry for men because they won't ever find out um, the jo- how much joy there is in killing a baby. Wow, bro, uh, and how in and, the world? Yeah, and I and I posted on the you know. I, and you could say, well, that's, you know, that's an outlier. That's a weird, you know, that's just weird. That's just, you know, well, I don't know. I don't know. More and more that's becoming reflective. There's, there's people that are, you know, that their, their response to somebody saying, you know, that's a human, that is a human being in your womb. Right. You know, right. Uh, you know, my body, my choice. Okay. But you're making a choice over the uh, other body in you. Right. You know, and you make, you know, you make a statement like that. You say, you know, it's my body. It's my choice. I'm, yeah. But there's another body inside of you. That's right. not just part of your body. That's a, that's a separate, separate individual. Medical science doesn't even call that a part of your body. Right. That's a body within your body. That's why you have a womb. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you make these kind of statements and, and you make these kind of arguments and, and more and more, you know, it used to be back in the day. You know, people would say stuff like, yeah, but what about rape and incest? And what about, you know, and they would use these, you know, these examples. Now you're hearing more and more people say, you, you, you know what? I can kill whatever I want to kill. I can, you know, and, and they and they use those terms. And I don't know if they're using it for shock factor or right. if it's just simply what the Bible says that in the last days they will be without natural affection. Sure. And these and I'm just I'm just bringing that those things up as examples, and 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 what we mentioned earlier when when those kind of things when you're confronted with those kind of things and your 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 righteous indignation is jolted, sure, is that is that something that you look at and say, you know, I'd like to you know, I'd 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 like to slap that person upside the head who would make such a stupid statement or. Right. Or is it, God, that's why, that's why the cross. Yeah. That's how, that's how, that's how desperately lost people actually are. Absolutely. Well, and, and, you know, a lot of times we have, we have some, some mutual friends that refer to us as the sons of thunder, because I don't know if people know this or not, but we're a little passionate. We really are. (laughs) I don't know if anybody knows that. There's just something in the Dillingham genes. It's just, it's just. I don't even us. like you using the word little. <laughs> ah, oh man, we're so passionate and competitive. You had to have an extra child just so you had more kids than me. I was That's exactly always, right. So, but you know, Jesus dealt with this, the sons of thunder. And, you know, they call down fire, call down lightning from heaven and strike those people that are not with us. And Jesus is like, no, 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 it's not, that's not, that's not the deal. That's not what we're here for. It doesn't mean that there's not judgment because 
you know, we, we see it in the book of Acts, the New Testament church, that there is judgment. Um, but I, I love what you said, man. And I think, I think it, it leads directly into, you know, you're talking about abortion. We're talking about all of that, the sensitivity of that and understand that, um, you know, you and I both in ministry have, have had the opportunity to talk to ladies that have had an abortion and deal with the long lasting ramifications that come from that. And I know that that's anecdotal and whatever, but I think it's probably more prominent, more prevalent than even they realize. Mm -hmm. And, and the reality is I can hold a strong position in the value of life and, and boldly declare to my world that God is the giver of life. And every child that is created has value because, Mm -hmm. because they're, they're God's creation. And at the same time, also say to that woman that that has done that for whatever reason, maybe it was out of selfishness, selfishness. Right. maybe it was out of desperation, maybe it was out of fear, they didn't know what else to do, they were uh, right. alone, whatever the reason is, right. to be able to say to that lady, look, he's a God of forgiveness. Adam and Eve, they didn't understand forgiveness, they hid themselves from God, they tried to cover their sin. Exactly. And yet God shows up and, and brings them forgiveness. And I think this is real world discussion conversations. You're going to come in contact with people that may be, you know, very strong opinion about things that we think violate or go against God's word. We're not we're not saying you have to compromise God's word, but what we're also saying is you don't have to be mean spirited. You don't have to be ugly. You can be strong. You can be uh, not, not can be, I would say should be rooted and grounded in his word, but also have the ability to look that lady in the eye, that young lady who's had an abortion and say, God is a God of forgiveness. He's a God yeah. of grace and mercy. He wants to heal that wound. He wants to heal that brokenness that is in yeah. you. And I think that's where, I think that's the, uh, place where I, I think that's the growth we need to have when it comes to discipleship. Don't you? Absolutely. It is. And I think that's, and, and it is, again, comes from the top down perspective. Um, you know, it comes down, it comes from the perspective of, like you mentioned about ought defenders. And I think sometimes we look at, you know, you, pe- people may he- be hearing that for the first time. They may be watching on Facebook live as we record our podcast. They may be tuned into the podcast at, at, at some later date and hear that term, you know, ought defenders, what do you mean? And, and the ought defender is somebody who says, this is the way it ought to be. And, and, um, you, you know, and the oughts are often built on our understanding of God's better way. It's yeah. often built on our understanding of, you know, there, there's a way God wants things to be. Uh, sometimes our ought, we defend our ought because it's what we want it to be. Sure. And Absolutely. I think, and I think, I think we need to be honest enough as, as, uh, as Christians and, you know, Christ followers to literally look at our lives and say, you know, we, we're looking at people who are in these circumstances and they're really reflective of the darkness in, in our mind. And, uh, and the question is, yeah, but to whom much is given much is required. And my answer would, would be to myself and to, you know, those types of people is to say, you know, people who've been serving God for many years is to say, okay, that's, that's all fine and dandy, but is God still changing what you care about? Mm -hmm. Is God still modifying your life to have a top down perspective about things? Are you wanting, are you wanting to back your way back into Eden? Are you wanting to reverse the effects of the fall so that we end up back in perfection yeah. from a human perspective or because there's a reason why God put a flaming sword and didn't let Adam and Eve back in the garden. Sure. Or, sure. or do you believe that the perfect is coming? Do yeah. you believe the perfect one can be in your heart and that the perfect day is coming and that that day is forward? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's so true. And I, I, I mentioned about the sons of thunder thing and, and, you know, that's kind of our nature, kind of our inclination. And yet I think evidence of the working of his spirit is the ability to, to have those strong opinions, but then also to be able to, to offer the hope of the gospel 
yeah. to people that maybe are, are contradictory to what we believe Absolutely. or what we think. And that's, Absolutely. that's evidence. And he's, you know, he's still doing that work in us. And I think, you know, talking about, talking about the last days and end times, there's a lot of conversation about all of that. And sometimes we can get hyperbolic with some of it, but I think exactly what you said that, that, you know, if the early church was looking for it, we certainly should look for it as well. And I think it, it should do a couple things for us is number one is we should recognize and realize that in the last days, it is going to be that pressurized situation that you started out the conversation with. If we think that the end times, I mean, you know, I hate to use a, a, a sports analogy, but, you know, when you get in to late in the game, that's where you get the most critical, the most crucial time. And that's, that's where we're at. We're late in the game. It's fourth quarter. It's end of game situations. And, and more is on the line. More is at stake in the last, you know, the last portion of time than any other time. The other parts of the game certainly matter. But, but, and so we need to just embrace, I think, and recognize that this world, this hour that we're living in is inherently going to come with pressure that God put us in this time for a reason and he put us here for a purpose. And so I think that's one thing. And I think the second thing is recognizing that we are, we are living in this, this season where, you know, we believe that we believe in the imminent return of Jesus and that, that ought to motivate us to, you know, put aside things that are not as important, not as valuable to lay aside those things and really hone in and focus on what is most important. Yeah. And that's where being, it really boils down to two things, right? The great commandment, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, love your neighbor as yourself. I think it'd be reworded as be a disciple and make disciples. Yeah. That, that, I mean, it really. Yeah, great commandment, great commission. Right. I don't want to oversimplify it, but really those two things is really what it comes down to. And I think recognizing the time it, it, it brings an awareness. It causes you to like, you know, man, I just, I'm, I'm worried about things that are not going to matter. They're not going to last. They're not important. And it should drive us and motivate us to be passionate about the things that God is passionate about. Well, well, I was driving down the road one day and I saw a semi and on the back of the semi, there were these cars and they were stacked. You've seen them before where there was probably, I don't know, 20 cars on the back of this semi on this flatbed trailer. And right. they're all chained up and they're all, they've all been smashed down. And there's like five of them stacked on top of each other. Right. And we're driving down the road. And I said, I said, Hey, I said, Hey guys, look here. I said, there goes somebody's dream car. And they laughed, you know, my kids, they were like, ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, nobody wants to drive that car. I said, no, no. What I mean is there was a day that wow. somebody thought they were the boom shakalaka because they were driving off the lot with what, that new car that today is sitting. That's where our world's headed. I took that wow. moment and said, kids, Bro. that's where our mo that's where our world's headed. You, you may be in something Love right that. now and you're like, you know, like this is my, this is my dream life. Yeah. Well, so true, man. So true. And I think, I think, you know, I think what we need to do is instead of, instead of being so hyper-focused on what's wrong, man, I think a true disciple of Jesus looks at it and says like, like that situation, this is an opportunity. This is the greatest opportunity we have ever had where sin does abound. Grace does much right. more abound. The light has greater effectiveness yeah. when, when it's the darkest. And so instead of, instead of looking at all of the quote unquote disadvantages that come with living in this day, I think, I think a real world discipleship discussion is no, no, no. This is the greatest opportunity we've ever had to be ambassadors for Jesus in a broken world. Dude, Look, if sin, that's so good. And, 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 you know, you mentioned too, uh, so you're talking about from a missional perspective, but part of our mission is our home and our families and those that are closest to us. And we have influence with, well, I'll talk you know, about if, that, you know, and your, your daughter's birthday today. Absolutely. You know, 16 years old. I'm going to tell you something right now. We look at it and we're so sometimes scared out of our head, but while you were talking, I thought, you know, here, here's the thing. Our, our grandparents as our, as our parents were, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I guess, I guess our parents weren't really teenagers in the fifties. Not I mean, I, 
late late 50s but anyway i i mean um i mean we're a little younger than that and <laughs> and all but you know you look at the 50s only slightly yeah the the uh you you know it was it's probably not real easy to look at your child in the 50s and tell them we don't need to be like the world don't be like the Fonz and and the you know richie and the happy days gang <laughs> You know, there's got to be some people go the Google the Fonz. Like, what's that Fonz. mean? The Fonz, the Fonz. Henry yeah. Winkler. Uh huh. And you know, and, and and so you got you got the Happy Days crew, and you got I mean that was that was you know ooh, that was worldliness, and um, you know the things that they were involved in and, and liked and wanted and stuff like that. You know, would in that day would have been somewhat antithetical to godliness and consecration and sanctification. Today you look at it and go. <laughs> right really? you really know bad. you know it's bad yeah. i start this is my latchkey kid coming out in me i started yeah. to sing the theme song of happy days <laughs> goodbye <laughs> sunshine hello great <laughs> no, sorry yeah yeah <laughs> sunday monday happy. so um <laughs> but you know but here's the deal i think i think it's you, you know we look at this and we say boy sure is who man our kids are going to be raised up in this day but looking at those cars on the back of that cr those crushed cars on the back of that and saying you know that that was that was somebody's dream car one day they saved yeah. for it they 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 put their life in hawk in fact if man. if if hey if we know that it's true and it is true yeah that that money finances is the number one cause the, the number one cause of the stress that causes divorce in marriages 100% then there was somebody who overextended themselves to buy that dream car that ended up in a divorce. And that well, car ended up on the back of that stupid truck. That's where it ended you, up. You ended up in a, you ended up in a doggone divorce and your dream car that created that stress that you just had <laughs> to have ended up on the back of that. I feel the Holy ghost right now, bro. That ended, that about. ended up on the back of that flatbed truck all smashed up and you ended up with your life all smashed up because of the, because of the stuff you just had to have identity, have all these things. You know what? I, I, I don't know. Maybe it is easier to point to our kids and say, you really want that? It's, maybe yeah. it's easier for our kids to point at this world when it's just violently in your face. It's like, yeah, well, men are never going to have the opportunity to know what, how, the joy of killing a baby. And you, and you look at your children and you say, kids, this is what I'm talking about. This is, I have one phrase that I always tell my kids when stuff happens and, 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 and things, things go wrong or we see something bad or we see something tragic. Um, I remember, man, I feel the presence of the Lord. I, I remember uh, one day we were, we were coming from a graduation and there was a lady and she had passed out and she had, I mean, she had blood, she had fallen down. Mm. Um, she, she had, uh, lost control of her bladder. She's embarrassed. And we came up on the situation and I walked away and I just started to, to cry. And, and my children looked at me and they said, dad, did you know that woman or, you know, whatever? And I said, no, I said, I said, that's the consequences of, of sin. Mm. That's she didn't fall because of sin. She didn't, she didn't fall down and break her, you know, a bone yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. It's that is what the corrupted world. God never intended that. Right. God never intended it to look like that or end up like that. God never intended that kind of brokenness. Right. And, and I think that, you know, we're living in a world today where maybe, maybe one of the ways that we create both missional living people today and missional living next generation is to point at this stuff and say, this isn't the way God wanted to be. Mm. He's got a better way. He's got a better way. So good, man. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Yeah. Right. And it, yeah. the stripping away can actually be a huge blessing, man. It's so good. And I love, I love following the the leading of his spirit there talking yeah. about, talking about, you know, people that overextended themselves and the consequences, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe God's greatest blessings have been what he hasn't given us. And yeah. again, maybe like you said, this could be the greatest blessing to be able to point and say, look, there's not ever been a greater disparity between the way of the world and the ways of God. And look at the, look at the ramifications. Look at what happens when you go down the ways of the world versus the ways of God. And so, man, I I want to, I want to end today, Ken, I know we're, we're coming up on time. I want to end today yeah. and just be an encouragement because I believe yeah. that, that, 
with everything going on. I don't know what's going to happen at the end of today, the end of tomorrow, the end of the week, whatever. We, we don't know what's going to happen, but I believe that God has positioned his people. Yes. And the greatest position that we have ever been in ever in the history of the world, God has positioned us for a moment like this, for a time like this, and the greatest life of fulfillment, the greatest life of peace, the greatest life of joy that you'll ever have is not in that car. It's not in the car of your dreams or the house of your dreams or education or career or the things of this world, but it's when you are committed and living on mission every single day and fulfilling his plan for that. That's what's, that's, what's most important. And man, I, I feel it. I feel the encouragement in the Holy ghost today. Yes. I feel that strength in the Holy ghost that this yes. is the greatest hour yes. that we've ever lived in, that we've ever been in before. Yeah. And God wants people. He wants to awaken people. The reason we're doing this podcast is because God wants to awaken people who are living so far below and they're, they're bored. They're tired. They're weary of just going to church and check off the list and this is what yeah. I do. I don't do this because I go to yeah. church. Don't do that. And and to really live out their purpose of why yeah. they were created. And that is to be ambassadors for Jesus. Yeah. Lost people and saved people yes. living below their living below God's plan for their life. Absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. let's look at this world today. Let's look at the situations. Let's look around us and say, you know, Lord, number one, it is a reminder that we are as Abraham who was amazingly blessed yeah here found no continuing city mm. but he looked for a city with foundations whose builder and maker was god my 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 let's let this on this day when so much is being determined down here maybe it might be good for us to be reminded that it's already been settled in heaven <laughs> oh man bro my god forever settled in him. my god true i feel the i feel the presence of the lord come today. on man <laughs> so good so yeah. good and and you know this is this is what we want we want to be a different kind of a podcast we want we want to let that flow and uh this is what we're about so we certainly hope everybody has enjoyed the conversation today we hope i hope people have felt or are feeling yeah. what we feel right now. right now the presence of the lord the strength of his spirit man just such an encouraging presence of god that's here right now and uh ken i'm we don't we don't hardly ever do this but i want you to do me a favor what is that? Did you close us out in prayer today i think that Absolutely. i think that's where we need to go i think we just need to close out in prayer mighty god as we come before you right now we recognize that you taught your disciples and us to pray that your name is hallowed that you are that 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 all things are already established you've won the victory lord we we know the outcome because the outcome is settled the victory has already been won we we're just living in a world god that often is re referred to as the as the now and not yet Lord, there, the kingdom, there's a now aspect of the kingdom and there's a, and then there's a not yet aspect of the kingdom and God, let us live out what we know about the not yet part, the, 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 the best part, uh, God, we, now we just have the first fruits of our inheritance and, 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 but, but then is coming the fullness of everything that you've created for us. Lord, help us to really honestly live lightly in this earth. Let us hold on to the things of this earth lightly. Let us, let us be passionate, God. Let, let us, let the kingdoms of our heart bow to your, your royal divine glory. And God, I pray in Jesus name that everybody hears this and everybody who experiences this would live mobilized in Jesus name. Awesome, man. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that prayer today. We hope everybody was blessed by this conversation, blessed by this discussion. We certainly would love to hear from you. You can go to the dillinghamgroup.org. Nailed it that time. Dillinghamgroup.org. And uh, you can fill out the form. We certainly would love to hear from you. Comment on Facebook. Help us share, like, um, podcast. We do have an exciting announcement, Ken. So we know what is, what is we, under, we understand that there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of question. And so later in this week, we'll kind of feel it out and see how things are going. But later in this week, we're going to do a bonus episode mm. conversation. Yeah, the bonus round. 
a little little bonus round, a little 15, 20 minute uh, segment to talk about, you know, where do we go from here? What does this mean? Little bonus segment coming up. So be looking for that. And uh, in the meantime, as we love to say, thank you for joining us today. And in the meantime, go and live mobilize. God bless you.